Can you hear me? Yes, sir. The streaming has started, sir. Uh, now you're live, okay? Okay, sir. Sneha, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, ek bar unse, you know, just ask him what to do once the program is, event is done. Simply, do we have to? Yes, sir. Through? I think so. Uh, sir, Rajkumar, sir. Yeah, tell me. Ek bar ye, you know, once the program is over, hume kuch karna nahi hai na. Ye to automatically, once we all leave the event, uh, ye sara ye ho jayega na. No? Uh, I didn't understand, sir. Means that you have to live. No, 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 no. You know, eight o'clock or you know, whenever the program gets over, we have to do something. Just leave it. Just leave the meeting, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, where is the streaming going on? Um, I can't mm -hmm. find it, sir. I mean. Oh, uska link mangwa lo, no? Yes, sir. Could you please send the link? <laughs> I have pasted the link on the chat box. Please check it. Okay, sir. There are very few attendees uh, registered. Please share your link as early as possible because only 53 are there. Yes, sir. Neha, please uh, request or call everyone to join. Yes, sir. Um, Muskan, ask the organizing team to individually message all the class groups to join. So who is doing the welcome? Uh, Sneha, you uh, yes, are sir. doing the welcome? Yes, sir. And uh, who will do the vote of thanks? Sir, Nandana. Since Richa won't be able to come. Oh. Muskan, please ask them to join. And Gunjita, you are in the attendees, right? Please ask everyone in our class to join. Okay, sure, Sneha, I'll, I'll do that right away. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Hi, ma'am. Hi, Dr. Hi, Rohit. Please to ask the guest to join once. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, because I, don't know, I have sent the invitation twice to her. I don't know if she received or not. Yes, yeah. sir. I think Sunish sir is here. Um, sir? Sir, uh, are we audible to you? Yeah, yeah, we are on. 
Hello. Yes, sir. We are on. Yeah. We have started live streaming, sir. And okay. No, no. The madam can join uh, sharp seven uh, o'clock. Okay, sir. This, uh, okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Can we also have the YouTube link, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Sneha, please uh, provide and comment the thing. Ma'am, it's in the chat box, ma'am. Okay. Muskan, please share the link on all of the groups. I will also upload it uh, as soon as possible on the social media handles as well. Just to say. Yes, thank you. Neha, making you the host. Okay. Okay, you can sir. Just, uh, call me up. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you ah. so much.
Good evening, ma'am. So great, good to have you. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Warm yes. welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, ma'am. Good evening. Yeah. Good welcome. evening. Good evening. Let so us start. Yeah, yes, yeah. ma'am. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Okay, ma'am. Um, yes. We'll just start right now. I'll just start the recording as well. Yes. So, a very good evening, everyone. I, Sneha R, President of ZEST, the Literary Society of the Department of English, Dean Dhanupadhyay College, University of Delhi, welcome you all to the third session of ZEST Lecture Series 2021 post-pandemic world, <clears throat> from pandemonium to paradise. Let me introduce the speaker to you all by telling you a story. On the 30th of January, 2020, a person had rushed from Trivandrum to the Garmin Medical College in Trishur, where many doctors and uh, officers were waiting for her. The me meeting lasted till about 2 a.m. And in those dreaded late night hours, she addressed the media people and told them about the first case of COVID-19 in India a medical student who had returned from Wuhan, China. And a rep reporter recollects, and I quote, when she arrived, no one could see any sign of stress on her face. Shalija teacher appeared calm as always. A teacher without whom any academic endeavor is incomplete, an author of four books, a renowned politician, a thinker who has been named as world's top thinker 2020 by Prospect, a world leader invited to speak on you and public service day, the recipient of the CEU Open Society Prize 2021, a Vogue warrior honored by the UN for exemplary efforts in tackling the COVID-19 pandemic using the Kerala model, science or superstition. No, no, we don't have these seven guests here. We have all of these in one person, the one and only KK Shalija Ma'am. Valiantly winning hearts and battles equally, Ma'am is known for her tough mind, tender heart and a remarkable level of integrity sincerity and deafness with our job. We are extremely honored and privileged to have you with us today, ma'am. On behalf of the Department of English, Dean Dharupathya College, University of Delhi, I honestly welcome you to this session from Nipah and Corona to the dreams of a post-pandemic world. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. I would like to warmly welcome our teacher in charge, Dr. Rohit P, and our other faculty members. I would like to welcome all the attendees of today's lecture. So before beginning the event, I would just like to inform you all that the session would be recorded and it is being streamed live on the ZES YouTube channel. The feedback form would be released during the event and the feedback would be used uh, for the certificates which will be printed. And you may drop your questions in the chat box and select questions will be addressed by ma'am during the Q&A session in the end if we get time. So let's begin the event and dream together of a post-pandemic world. Thank you so much for having uh, come here, ma'am. It means a lot. <laughs> Thank you. And so uh, we'll be asking questions and it will be conversational. <laughs> yeah, so, that's good. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So let's start with your childhood. Were there pandemics and health threats when you were a child? Yes, uh, uh, it is. Uh, I think uh, uh, there are uh, uh, pandemics are rampant at that time also. That is in 1960s, 70s. Uh, uh, when I was a child, uh, I was born in 1957. And uh, when I was a child, uh, the some pandemics, uh, uh, that, that developed that they didn't develop as a pandemic, but there are some infectious diseases like uh, uh, this uh, smallpox and cholera, malaria. Everything was there at that time, and people are suffering too much. And uh, as you know, the smallpox uh, is very rampant. Uh, there. That's also a viral disease, and people are dying due to uh, smallpox because uh, it is said that uh, that is a curse of some goddess to the people, Amma uh, Kobam in Malayalam, that is a curse of a goddess, and no one can escape from it. If one caught uh, the virus, uh, no one can escape from it, and there is a belief like that, and the people were uh, discarding everything who caught this virus, and also they are evicting these poor people from home to uh, another uh, tents or uh, 
uh, temporarily reside uh, residents uh, reside uh, to temporarily sheds or like that and people were dying without getting water or without getting food and people were dying with uh, fear and also pain and at that time when i was a child my grandma uh, my model woman was my grandma as i always said uh, my grandma was a brave lady and also we got some left ideas in her mind because my grandma's uh, brothers are uh, they were freedom fighters first and they belongs to congress party and slowly uh, they were attracted to left ideology and in inside in congress uh, they uh, started work as congress socialist and also then communist party and uh, the party leaders always give uh, the awareness classes about the uh, scientific number etc and one of such class they came to know that the smallpox is not the curse of the goddess but uh, it is a false belief a superstition but it is a disease uh, it is an infectious disease and if we try our best to contain that thing um, uh, we can uh, uh, handle the problem and we can tackle the problem and we can slow down this uh, prevalence of uh, uh, transmission of virus and she become very bold and uh, she went to other houses where the poor people caught uh, the smallpox and she started to nurse them and uh, all of them all of the people were afraid at that time when i was a little child she told the stories about uh, uh, her nursing of this uh, uh, the affected people and uh, when i was a child at that time also uh, once a man called corin uh, my neighbor uh, caught this virus and my grandma was uh, young at that time but she went to that house uh, corin's uh, little hut and but the uh, there are some uh, oracle of the goddess uh, they were we are calling uh, them in komaram in malayalam and with uh, the turmeric powder and with a sword in his hand he is praying uh, to uh, let this uh, patient to be taken or uh, uh, keep them alive to goddess uh, and at that time uh, that peep, uh, man didn't allowed my grandma to enter the house but she boldly entered into the hut and find that uh, the uh, poor man was crying for water and uh, the this man is not giving anything to eat or anything to drink and this um, all of his body all the body was infected by the smallpox virus and uh, he is die he was sinking but my grandma at once give uh, him some water and uh, he asked to give that turmeric powder from this oracle and uh, Uh, from, uh, he uh, put uh, all over his body this turmeric powder uh, and he she give water to him also when she returned home uh, she take a bath in hot water and she removed her dress and soaked in soap water and she took every precautions every precaution she, she was not a trained nurse you know uh, only for standard education at that time uh and she learned some scientist uh, scientist uh, etc but uh, she have no scientific knowledge but uh, through this awareness camp uh, she came to know that this is a infectious disease and we have to try our best to stop the infection and to wash your hands or uh, use this uh, hot water and soap water to wash the dresses etc to kill the virus and that way she nurses the that man and at last she, he uh, came to came back to his life and he was so loving to my grandfather after the days and when i was child this uh, man uh, used to came to my house each and every evening uh, he would be there and he explained the uh, story of my grandma's nursing of this kind of disease and that kind of thing gave me some understanding that we should have to uh, uh the the handle properly this uh, these things but at that time i never thought that i become uh, this health minister in future we cannot think so but when i become health minister and when i came to face this kind of infectious disease i remember my grandma uh, don't hesitate to do anything uh, don't think so much uh, uh, you should act at once you should do something truthful and something brave bravely you should have to act that thought gave me 
uh, some braveness. As you said, they, I didn't hesitate a moment uh, to act. Uh, that is the uh, thing. But this time, we have so many doctors, so many nurses, and we can uh, uh, easily, we can have a very good uh, team uh, for working. I built up a team and I started work. That is the thing. That's such an inspiration story, man. I mean, the grandmother and how she influenced you and how when you became the health minister, you just took all that and it's such so inspiring, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I mean, we were, uh, the next question is about family itself and uh, like mother uh, and gran- as you said, your grandmother had um, helped you and, and it, she had influenced this corona, the fight against Corona and NIPA in some way. So, how about the other women in your family? Means, how did they influence? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah actually, we can say that uh, my family was a women headed family most of the time. Because uh, when my uh, mother and uh, uh, her uh, sister born, at that time, my grand uh, grandfather uh, died at that time. Uh, and uh, again, uh, my grandma's father. Uh, get him, uh, get her remarried to her uh, to one of his uh, relatives, and I have another uh, uncles and aunties. Uh, uh, I had an uh, uncle in that marriage of my grandma, and uh, two aunties also, and uh, that was my family. But uh, the second uh, grandfather, uh, he is not with us. Or uh, my grandma is managing everything. Uh, in, in my childhood and also before my childhood and uh, our family our family was a poor family in the beginning but uh, when uh, the years just before my birth my family became very poor because of the political activities of my grand uncles uh, everything was lost at that time. at that time political uh, activities are not very easy especially for the communist party everyone is attacking and the uh, British uh, Malabar Special Police, uh, they were um, uh, acting severely or uh, uh, they were attacking the Communist Party members at that time. Uh, my grandma's father uh, was a supervisor in British estate uh, uh, in Kannur district. At that time, uh, there was no Kerala state um, and uh, near Kodagu, Kodagu district in Karnataka state. Now the place is in Karnataka state. Makuta estate, tea estate that belongs to the British man. And my grand, uh, grandma's father was a supervisor in that uh, estate. At that time, uh, the supervisor job, it is very, uh, yeah, very uh, proud to be, uh, to have uh, some job in a British estate. And she have monthly salary. That was a great thing in that time. Uh, most of the people were poor and tenants of landlords. They have no their own lands at that time. But uh, the landlord was very fond of uh, this uh, grandma's father, Raman Mestri. And uh, the uh, landlord gave uh, uh, the lands. He asked uh, my grand-grandpa uh, to uh, have as much of land as you can, uh, you want. And we have uh, more than 50 acres or like that land. No one uh, count the or, or no one uh, have measured the extent of the land at that time but uh, in that uh, the most of the land was forest area uh, and we have some lands and we have uh, uh, some livelihoods we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, things like hash bush life at that time my when when my uh, mother was born a well built family my family was a well built family but uh, the grand uh, grandfather died and uh, this uh, my grand uncles grandma's brothers become the Communist Party members and uh, full-time party workers and uh, freedom fighters and then Communist Party workers. And uh, police often were uh, behind them. And uh, there were some of them were in jail for a prolonged time. And police uh, uh, have beaten them, had beaten them severely. And uh, because of that, we lost everything, our land. Only three acres of land left for my grandmother. And uh, when the Second World War uh, ends, the Great Famine also come. At that time, life become so difficult. We have nothing to eat or uh, uh, no new dresses for my mother and uh, mother's sisters, etc. And uh, 
when my uncle became grown uncle grown up uh, he started doing some work he was a brilliant boy but he, he, he cannot continue the education because of this uh, uh, bad condition financial condition of my family but when she, can he grow up uh, he took the uh, family's uh, everything he took in his hand and again we started coming back but uh, in the youth part of my mother and mother sister that was very severe and uh, they worked hard to uh, keep the two ends of life together and that was the fate of my family but my mother was very loving and uh, her name is shanta means calm shanta means calm and is a calm and quiet lady and he worked hard for the younger sisters and brothers he was the uh, she was the Uh, elder one of my grandmother and she was very affectionate very lovely but i got some opportunity that when i i was born uh, at that time i had uh, actually we can speak that i had three mothers actually uh, my mother my grandmother and my mother's sister uh, she had one daughter uh, just below the age of me and she died uh, on three years when she of the i was five years and she was for uh, three years and she died due to cholera at that time and uh, that uh, aunt also loves me as her own child and i have three mothers and uh, i am uh, i got so much love from my family that was the condition at that time and uh, my grandma is leading everything uh, that is a women led family at that time the end decision final decision is uh, my grandma's decision and the same to my mother and uh, Uh, aunt uh, they will decide everything in the family i found that in my uh, my childhood and they helped me very much to frame or mold my character and be bold uh, in, in everything and don't hesitate to act on some miseries and they give always that lesson to me and that mold up my character also that was really amazing i mean to know the influence the mother i mean you mentioned your three mothers all of them influenced you it was so good and uh, yeah. nandana you can ask the next question yeah ma'am during one of the sessions of the assembly you gave a reply to one of the opposition mlas and it has gone viral you stated and i quote what's the problem if a woman is the leader with your time in office as a women health minister you have reconstructed all the sexist norms that existed in the society as an internationally honored women health minister and one of the most acclaimed women in the history of kerala what is your take on this yeah uh, i am working in the political uh, field also and uh, i was the uh, worker of a women front i was the state secretary of that uh, women's organization all india democrat women's association and now uh, also i am uh, the central committee member of uh, uh, all india democratic women association and the aim of this organization is, is the emancipation of women we are fighting for equality in the society women are equal to men all are equal human beings are equal but uh, the society itself is giving some uh, some kind of downward and state to the women Uh, they are believing that even uh, actually we can say that the mode of the society is deciding the uh, the uh, status of men or women and we have so many mode of societies and uh, during this evolution of human being uh, we can find that uh, uh, slavery was there in african countries now also in some of the african countries the slavery is there some are slaves and some are lords and the lords are always uh, uh, behaving cruelly to the slaves and another time the landlordism came and the all the lands are belongs to landlords and the poor people who were working working class uh, they were the tenants of the landlords and they have no rights and some uh, some kind of beliefs are there in purana and vihasa etc the uh, some landlords are uh, falsely describing the purana and the vikasa etc that uh, they are saying that caste difference is the and the lord is responsible for the caste difference uh, then they they will recite some shloka from uh, this bhagavad 
Bhagavad Gita or anything. And um, they are saying that the Lord said that Brahman Osya Mukhamasi Pahu Rajanyakrita Uru Tadeshwai Drishya Patyam Sudru Ajayade. That Lord created the four cars. The one, the upper class is, below, uh, is known as Brahmana. And that came from the head of the Lord. And uh, Chitriyas are there. That came from the hands of the God. And Vaishya, uh, uh, the businessmen, etc. Uh, uh, that, that, that they were there. And that belongs to the body of the God. And the last one, Sudras, that belongs to the leg of the uh, God. And the Sudras have to uh, treat each and every upper caste properly. Otherwise, Sudras were, may be beaten or punished or etc. by the uh, Brahmana. Brahmanas were responsible or they have the right to wealth and right to education. Everything belongs to this upper caste. But the Sudras have no right. There is a, There are some, some kind of uh, unwritten or uh, uh, laws uh, to punish Sudra, Sudra Danda Nidhi. When they, if the Sudra uh, happen to hear some Veda or the uh, the reciting Veda, uh, uh, she, he should be punished. And if a Sudra uh, discussed anything with Brahmana or uh, talk with Brahmana, uh, his uh, tongue should be pulled out. That kind of Sudra Danda Nidhi was there. In, uh, among it, uh, there, there are some unwritten laws for the women also. Women are second sex. Women cannot speak loudly. Women cannot walk straightly. Women cannot, uh, uh, they have no right to uh, have anything. Uh, and in Malabar area, there was a custom that women cannot wear tops. They should be naked. Uh, women should be naked. They cannot wear tops. And another uh, custom was the when a poor woman in the lower caste get married, she cannot go directly to her husband's home. Uh, she, he, she should have to go to the landlord's house and only after the virginity breaking by the landlord, uh, she is allowed to go to his husband's house. What a pity condition was uh, for the woman at that time. But the woman uh, fight hardly and they have some organizations. Some women organizations start to come and they fight uh, with uh, to improve their uh, destiny and, or, or to get some rights. And after that fight, uh, and after the fight of the agricultural workers also join fight against the landlordism to, to uh, overcome uh, from these kind of atrocities, they fought hard. When Kerala formed in 1947, 1957, 1947, we got independence. And 1957, the linguistic states are formed in our country. And there was an election in Kerala and the democratic government came in power in 1947. The very first government have an ordinance at that time that no uh, agricultural workers should be evicted from that. No landlords can evict them from their lands. That was a very good strength to the poor working class. And uh, when the eviction is stayed, uh, the people stand still and they began to ask their freedom, etc. Women also uh, started to wear top and uh, started to walk in the common way, uh, common road or common path. And uh, they started their education. And uh, women become something different in after 1957. 1960s and 70s, uh, again, there are some improvements. But now itself, now also, uh, everything is not changed. Now also, there is a thought that women are second sex. In assembly itself, some men are talking like that. Some men, MLA, are talking like that. Once, uh, last time when I was minister, one MLA said that uh, some women, they are very good. They are like men. I feel something uh, uh, bad on that. That women are women. They can do any responsibilities that men, uh, men can do. And uh, if a woman is strong, they are, uh, uh, said, they are saying that she is like men. She is not like men. She is a woman. Women can do as much men can do. Women can become minister. Women can become panchayat member. Women can become engineer. And all women can become doctors. They are not the second thing, you know. Then I shouted in the assembly that you cannot say so. What is wrong with women? She can act well. She can do any social work. Any social change she can make. 
then why are you speaking that uh, if any any woman is smart then you are uh, comparing them to men she is like men and, and that means women are not good but this women act like men and she is only good uh, that we cannot allow and we are for equal right equal responsibilities and the equal uh, status in the society we should have to fight hard now also we should have to fight hard now also there are some discriminations with the sex or gender uh, there are so many discriminations for women and uh, young and and uh, uh, the students etc girls there are so many atrocities against them we should have to fight hard thank you so much ma'am that is so inspiring and i do agree with this point like we need to fight for our rights yes and the next question is in the in the beginning of covid 19 came and left the whole world in a state of shock and hopelessness and at that time we heard a voice from kerala saying we can't afford to show fear we overcame nipa we will overcome corona virus it was you who said this as a health minister could you please explain what was the force and strength in you and your words which filled the minds of all care lives with hope when the whole world was still stuck not knowing what to do is yes, uh, actually nipa gave us some experiences uh, it was the first time we are we were facing that kind of a virus in kerala and uh, we know about the fungus and virus everything are around us virus is the already is the and the some kind of bats fruit eating bats are the carriers of uh, nipah virus and also this covid virus uh, that that is the and they we are living uh, we should have to understand one thing that uh, we are living amongst all these virus fungus bacteria etc but always they are not uh, uh, irritating or uh, uh, they are not dangerous uh, but sometimes uh, this virus uh, become uh, excited or they become in a large quantity and uh, they will multiply when the uh, the carriers or the hosts are uh, excited or disturbed uh, the virus in their body uh, become okay, become multiple mul- multiplies and that become dangerous thing and they spit this thing outside and when that got in um, uh, a human beings body that become dangerous all these are zoonoses we can say so from animals we are getting uh this nipa and covid in human bodies when the virus uh, is um, in a dead body or a, a dead uh, material it cannot multiply it cannot uh, imitate or it cannot uh, divide and become large number but in a living body in living cells the living cells of the uh, uh, organisms or living cells uh, they will multiply in our human body in epithelial cells they become multiplied to uh, to uh, thousands or crores of uh, the, the same uh, part and uh, when the nipah virus occurred uh, i came to know that it is a uh, virus that uh, transmit only or the transmission occur only through the contact uh, through the contact it uh, will transfer from one human body to another human body and at first we thought that our duty is to uh, to cut this uh, chain of the transmission that is the first thing and when we uh, heard that uh, this nipa virus is there in a village in one of our district in kolikot district i rushed there and uh, i asked the, my uh, secretaries and uh, doctors that we should have to contain this thing the uh, this small place and we should have to close that area i discussed with experts and they also said that we should have to close that area uh, no one should be allowed to go outside no one should go to inside at that time but people were afraid at that time and when they came to know that uh, this nipah virus they started to flew from the village and uh, they t- to call their uh, livelihoods uh, bags uh, and everything and they started to flew from there and at once i rushed to that village also with my Uh, officers and also experts and uh, we gave a plea to them that don't move outside we will we will we, we will be here and our healthcare workers and volunteers will be here nothing happened to you and all the healthcare system uh, is working for you 
if you go outside we cannot identify you and we cannot give proper treatment please stay here we request them and the people obeyed and because of that we can contain the virus in the short span of time in that small area it didn't come outside that is the experience of nipa when i came to know that a potential virus is spreading in wuhan china i happened to read one of the statement of the world health organization that is in 2020 january 18th uh, i heard about this virus sars corona virus 2 belongs to corona family and it is highly dangerous virus highly infectious and mortality rate it is comparatively lower than nipa but mortality rate is high and i feel something in my heart that again it is coming like nipa to kill the people and at once i called my health secretary and discussed with them that is officer i said rajan this virus will come to kerala because in wuhan there are so many malayali students they are studying there for the medic- medical education and I, i i i remembered that some students returned to me before that for internship etc and uh, i am familiar with this name wuhan and that university also and that is why i become afraid uh, about this thing and uh, i asked rajan uh, we should have to take some measures we should have some preparations uh, before uh, it, uh, it uh, came to kerala and at once we started uh, we opened the control room state control room and asked all district to start control room and also we trained some volunteers from our health sector and uh, we uh, deployed our team in airport whether anyone was coming back we uh, we should have to screen them and that idea worked well and that planning worked well and the very first uh, uh, students who came returned from returned from wuhan that is i think on 27th january etc uh, we got them from the airport itself and we isolated them and 30th we got the result we tested uh, and 30th we got the result that two, three of them are covid positive and because of the isolation uh, the spread didn't occur no one got virus from the three and they also become uh, recovered from the virus and that was the starting stage and uh, because of the enthusiasm uh, we got from the nipa incident i was enthusiastic if we act well i'm sure that we can stop this virus spreading and the first time it was like that and after the lockdown uh, the uh, i think uh, kerala was very safe so in march and april 2020 you know but at that time in may the month of may the central government lifted the lockdown at that time my neighbor states uh, our neighbor state like uh, the tamil nadu karnataka become hotspot and once the lockdown lifted the old malayalis Uh, started to return back to kerala and some clusters occurred that was the thing again we uh, have some protocol some standard operating procedures to crush the clusters and we acted well that way we worked and that give the enthusiasm the team work the training and the proper action at the proper time uh, that uh, i i was enthusiastic at that time thank you so much ma'am for uh, the wonderful thing i mean the proper planning is very much essential i mean you uh, just cut the virus in the beginning itself and then you prevented the spread that was really an amazing move ma'am um so yeah. the next question would be asked by muskan muskan oh uh, yes okay uh, ma'am uh, in kerala the uh, in kerala <clears throat> the covid safety protocol started way before it was considered a threat how did you uh, how did you realize the potential for it to become a pandemic even before uh, wh uh, who had declared it <clears throat> yes sir. we are aware of the some some of the uh, virus in that family uh, that corona family you know first uh, we have some Uh, occurrence of, uh, in the world uh, this uh, mers virus was the middle east respiratory syndrome and sars virus was also the uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome and that occurred in some part of world and so many people died out of sars and mers and in that writing it is said that uh, this uh, this new coronavirus at that time they were calling them 
calling the virus as novel coronavirus. This also belongs to the corona family like SARS and MERS. And uh, when I uh, find the literature or I read the literature, I started uh, searching for the uh, behavior of the virus in the literature. And I also discussed with the expert doctors and eminent personalities. And I came to know that this is dangerous virus. This will transfer from one human being to another. And it's uh, transferring, uh, the uh, rate of transfer is uh, this R1 rate uh, that is too high. And uh, the, from that thing, I came to know that it is something dangerous thing. And uh, Kerala, we have some challenges in Kerala in front of a infectious disease. Uh, Kerala is famous for the uh, system, health system. We have a comparatively good health system in Kerala. And in some indices of health, we are uh, in the forefront comparing to other parts of our country. But we have three great challenges in Kerala in front of an infectious disease. The first one is our population density. And in Kerala, uh, in one square kilometer, 860 people are living. But our national average is only 430. And our uh, population density is very high in Kerala. And uh, the infectious disease in a highly populated place or a, a dense place uh, that is severe, more people will caught very easily. The virus will spread easily to more people and thousands of them will die. Second threat is, even though our health system is good, we have some new challenge that we have uh, the lifestyle diseases are rampant in Kerala, uh, diabetic and uh, hypertension, uh, cancer, thyroid, etc. Because of the lifestyle. Lifestyle in Kerala changed a lot. We are eating too much rice, but we are not working hard. And the physical exercise is uh, very, very little. That is why most of the Keralites become diabetic. And uh, it is said that uh, Kerala is the diabetic capital of our country. India is known as the diabetic capital of the world. But Kerala is known as the diabetic capital of uh, our country. And uh, it is sure that when the COVID-19 came to Kerala, when it uh, catches the diabetic patients, it becomes severe. And if there is uh, comorbidities, uh, they will die. Definitely, they will die due to COVID-19 virus. It is very difficult to save them from the virus. And the third uh, challenge is the old age population is very high in Kerala. Uh, that uh, our life expectancy is too good. Uh, up to 74 years we are living. But in other states, the life uh, is uh, only 64 or 65 years. But in Kerala, we are living average, average, uh, 110 years uh, and uh, above 100 years. How many Keralites are living above 100 years? But this is a challenge to us. If an old age uh, uh, human being caught this virus, and uh, definitely death will occur. That is the threatening thing to me. Uh, but we tried our best to isolate these old age uh, people that uh, uh, self-isolation we started and uh, quarantine we started. And with quarantine, tracing, quarantine, testing, isolating and treating, that was our strategy. And we came to know that this virus will become dangerous in Kerala. There is a prediction also. The expert predicts that more death will happen in Kerala because of these three challenges. That is why we are afraid of this virus, but uh, no time to hesitate, no time to uh, fear. We should act at once. That is must. And we act at once and we have our protocol, our standard operating procedures, and also our strategy. We drafted our strategy for action. Everything we started earlier because of this fear. Yes, ma'am. Early, I mean, early tra tra tracking, tracing, and then treating is the uh, key. Um, yes. So next question will be asked by Sejal. <coughs> ma'am, the Hello? lockdown was an overwhelming global experience, during which we had a lot of moments in which we managed to find beauty, and those tiny moments had kept us going. We get the news report of a son singing a song to his dying mother through video call or a standard person finally reaching home? What was that one beautiful and emotionally charged moment that you had experienced, which you would remember forever? 
there are so many experiences like that but one touch my heart a man called me one day and a youth uh, he said madam yesterday i decided to suicide get suicide but i am living i am uh, alive today and what happened last night uh, i was in fear of covid 19 and definitely uh, i uh, get uh, wanted to get suicide but i have a number with me that the health department gave me a number if anything difficult you can call this number that is the number of a call center we have started so many call centers in kerala and uh, uh, <laughs> for god's sake yeah, he simply ringed one of that number she uh, he got and uh, uh, that uh, a lady uh, uh, a youth uh, took that took his phone and she started to speak with him and he expressed the fear and anxiety everything to her and they talked he said that uh, i think almost one hour we uh, talked together and at last uh, i lost the idea or i discarded the idea of getting suicide and uh, if i didn't connect that call to her the counselor and uh, definitely uh, i think i was not no more uh, the next morning uh, and uh, that I, uh, i when i heard that i uh, i developed my enthusiasm more and i was so thankful to my team that there is a very good team of young uh, students and uh, the workers like you the most of the youths smart uh, little ones ladies and uh, the smart youths were working for this thing they were calling the corona affected person morning evening and every time they were calling and giving some uh, strength to them and soothing them and there are so many experiences like that when an old man called me and said teacher it is fantastic i was so afraid about it but your people called me morning and called me evening every day they are calling how is it possible teacher uh, to call so many people like me and uh, i said that we have a number of uh, counselors and even volunteers and we gave training to them and uh, they are insisted for this duty itself and they are calling they are taking the number from the health department and they are calling and they are, we are we give duty to them they are calling them and this kind of activities and that is touching thing and they were very uh, they are grateful to us at that time so many people called and sent messages everything and that was a very good moment and i am proud of that and also i am proud of my staff my uh, team for that you know it is such a heart touching moment i mean the same thing happened to me i had also tested positive in november and <laughs> three people were <laughs> coming yeah. every people time like- it is yeah yes. <laughs> it was i thank you so much for that support <laughs> <laughs> thank you and um my manvi you can ask the next question yes teaching ma'am uh ma'am so the question is uh your approach towards combating the virus has been efficient and practical and you have shown nothing but sheer grit and perseverance in doing your duty what are some of the challenges that you faced in the process i cannot hear properly you are uh, asking about the future challenges um no ma'am i think she was asking about uh, the challenges that you faced in the process of coronavirus yeah. yes sir <laughs> all kinds of challenges were there was there you know uh, the first thing is uh, to improve the health system capacity that was the great challenge to us and we cannot uh, predict that how much extend the uh, the covid 19 uh, will go that we are trying to stop them stop the transmission but the virus are going from one person to another when if we quarantine some people Uh, and ask them to obey our principles they will obey in the day time but in night they were going and mingling with the family members and after three or four days we are finding that all the family members caught this virus and someone jumped the quarantine and they went to some marriages went from functions etc and at last we called for police help and policemen also helped us very much but these are human beings no we cannot tie them into a post or uh, we cannot lock them inside 
but uh, someone obeyed our uh, principles our protocols etc but someone didn't obey they jumped the quarantine that was the great challenge we should have to look them each and every time without uh, day and night we have to watch them properly and the second is the strength of the health system uh, and we were uh, we were afraid that he, uh, someone predicted that uh, next time the uh, day to day cases will rise up to 10000 to 20000 40000 etc then what will we do and we at once started our preparation when we have only 500 cases in our state positive cases we started to improve the hospitals bed capacity to 5000 even 50000 and in each and every evening we have meeting with our uh, hospital superintendents and also uh, medical officers and our health secretary will ask them one question look how many isolation beds you have and they may report in our medical college we have 200 isolation beds and we ask the question to them if 100 beds were filled beds are filled by the patients what will you do then someone said that uh, we have 100 more beds we will admit them no 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 we should have to open another place another hospital as covid hospital and start admission there also never the hospital will be should be filled by the patients that become the scarcity of the beds and we increase the beds in the hospital we bought so many beds and cots and we started to uh, buy these uh, oxygen cylinders and we started to give oxygen pipelines uh, repair oxygen pipelines in the hospital then improve the health system capacity and we will ask the uh, medical officers that if you have in your district you have 5000 cases where and where you will admit the patient he will say this hospital this hospital that hospital and then we ask if the number become 15000 or 20000 what will you do then they will said that there is a taluk hospital there we will prepare that taluk hospital for you and if it become 50000 what will you do and then they said we will took all the primary health centers and even the another place other than the hospital first line treatment center second line treatment center that is the preparation and that way we were improving the health system capacity our slogan the potential of the virus under the under the health system capacity threshold and we succeed in kerala we no one died without getting a bed no one died without getting oxygen someone died because of this comorbidities etc but no one died without getting treatment or without getting a bed in the hospital no. that was the challenge we faced at that time so good that i mean uh, that no one died without getting a bed because of the second <clears throat> wave also we saw so many deaths yes. it was so yes. sad and so good that because of preparation you were able to we were yes. able to avoid it yeah second time that delta variant occurred here and because of that election uh, the uh, spread become larger that is why second time the thousands of cases increased then also that's also increased but the death rate is below 1% you know that is because our health system is capable to admit all the patients yeah um next question will be asked by nancy uh, so ma'am i was watching one of your interviews and uh, you said that your hobbies include reading and listening to music so i wanted to ask you how has these hobbies helped and keeps helping you in your daily routine like managing your work and personal life okay there must be something uh, to rejuvenate or uh, make us fresh from this tense the situation you know and i am also i uh, my one of my hobbies reading but i can't read a book completely during this tense the uh, situation you know if it is common poet i will sit and read uh, the book i like but during this tense the situation i cannot sit and read i only enjoyed at that time for uh, for the planning uh, when i en- engaged in planning and activities uh, without planning and activities i cannot uh, keep my mind quiet but if i ha- i can able to plan uh, a thing in a day in the morning or evening meeting everything well planned for today's work i become released from the tension 
and uh, hearing the music also that will also give me uh, some relief but uh, during these tense days i cannot even listen the music at that time i can say that my phobia is planning planning and doing and preparing for tomorrow's work <laughs> that itself become a relief otherwise i will read uh, novels or uh, i will study some science books etc and also uh, hearing the uh, i like the music of uh, 60s 70s and 80s i think you cannot enjoy that music some sometimes and i enjoyed the uh, cinema songs etc in uh, 60s and 70s that melodies and uh, yashdas and uh, mohammad rafi etc uh, i want to uh, i like to enjoy that music i always do that uh ma'am my next question is uh, as we all know that children have been affected so badly by the pandemic uh, they have lost the precious uh, socializing uh, time they uh, get during their growing years i remember how uh, i asked one of the children in my neighborhood and uh, about her school like where her school is and she pointed at the laptop and said uh, google meet uh since uh, so how do you think children cope up with that uh, since you used to talk to your grandchild uh, through a video call during the beginning of the pandemic yes uh, the children are more vulnerable during this season and they are they suffered uh, <laughs> a lot of suffer uh, miseries uh, during this pandemic season you know uh, children want to play with their uh, friends and their uh, classmates etc and without going to school or uh, without going to anganwadi so without going to kindergarten uh, they are suffering too much they cannot uh, express the ideas or share the feelings and emotions to their friends and they become frustrated you know every time they are looking the screen uh, of the laptop for uh, this uh, telephone etc and uh, little ones are uh, seeing watching the uh, the cartoons and some stories uh, most of the time i have a little one my son's daughter in my country she is 3 and 1/2 years uh, and she had no other child to play with her in my home i had two uh, i have two sons uh, the elder one is in abu dhabi and he have also one little girl four years old and this is my second uh, son's eldest uh, youngest son's Uh, younger son's daughter and three and a half years. I cannot. Uh, we were not able to send her to the kindergarten or anganwadi or uh, uh, anywhere. She is uh, sitting in the home. And when we uh, go outside for working, her mother is also working, and only the aya uh, is with her. Uh, no one else. And what is the fate of that children? Remember, uh, think about that. And oh, most of the time when we were out, most of the time. she is looking to this cartoon and she developed some uh, kind of uh, mannerisms and characters of this uh, cartoon uh, this uh, these characters and but uh, she spoke well in english uh, she can speak well in english uh, because of the she is watching these english cartoons but uh, yeah, she want to uh, eat what what things are uh, eaten by these cartoon characters and she ordered she is ordering us to get that thing i never heard the name of that kind of uh, eatables you know and she is ordering us to purchase that things that is the thing the, how much uh, these cartoons and things are ruining their characters and even their day to day uh, life uh, that is have a uh, very good uh, impression or uh, uh, they, they are they are becoming another cartoon character during this season that is the thing i am afraid of it but whenever i was there in the home i whenever i reach home i used to uh, keep her with me and start telling stories etc uh, but uh, sometimes she want only one story that it also belongs to the cartoon uh, character <laughs> that is the fate of the children that and some really, uh, yes ma'am some issues in health also uh, the rice was spoiled and also their uh, back uh, backbone some problems uh, uh, in the backbone also we are afraid of that 
<laughs> that was very a uh, humorous explanation of how is that affects a child and um, and since we have our shortage of time um can we take one more question ma'am okay okay after 8 o'clock we yes ma'am uh, yes, it's ma from sejal sejal will be asking the last question okay uh ma'am your journey from being a women health minister to getting honored by un as work warrior has been inspiring and wonderful uh how would you describe the journey and what advice would you like to give a student who wants to achieve their dreams last last thing yes uh, ma'am which advice uh, would you like to give to a student yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay 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 yeah. i never expected that i can speak in un or uh, bbc or guardian etc that happened during my work as health minister that happened uh, accidentally happened we can say so when uh, i deal uh, dealt with the nipa virus and contained uh, it in a short time and uh, the whole world discussed about that how is it possible in a thickly populated uh, place like kerala uh, and uh, this uh, baltimore virology institute in usa invited uh, chief minister and me there and in front of eminent uh, scientists they asked me to explain uh, what is the activities you had conducted at that time and i explained everything uh, our preparation and our practice and they admired us and uh, they said that it is a fantastic work and proper thing and uh, we are not knowing what is proper at that time because of the push or uh, of the situation uh, we prepared the protocol and the activities as our own but not knowing that this is the correct thing you know but it worked well and they said that the proper thing you had done the proper thing at that time and i got that opportunity to explain this thing in front of eminent personalities in baltimore virology lab and same thing when uh, from guardian a call came to me and uh, they asked me that they want to have an interview with me at that time that is in 2020 and uh, one miss laura spinney is interviewing me i didn't heard about laura spinney or i didn't listen uh, in literature about her but i googled and uh, tried to find out who is this laura spinney and i came to know that she is a famous writer she wrote about the 1918 infectious disease flu the, the spanish flu she wrote a book and it is well known and she is also a very good speaker and also a well known personality among this world and i astonished that she is coming she is uh, interviewing me uh, that is in online and i was little bit afraid that uh, any answer to an eminent personality like her i thought like that but when she started to interview me and i i am explaining the activities that i am doing here you know nothing else uh, the replica of my activities i am giving everything and she was very pleased with me at that time she said it is fantastic work madam and uh, i will give it to guardian uh, as an uh, interview and when she put it in guardian i cannot think even she give a headline that uh, shyamita teacher the corona virus flyer kerala rock star means i never thought that she will put like a headline uh, headline you know and uh, all the people who read it uh, they began to call me at that time and i was also astonished that is too much you know but she wrote like that and that become a very good discussion in our uh, uh, our state also and that also happened act accidentally at that time in that interview i told her that uh, i cannot uh, anticipate what is what will happen in future and i said once the lockdown become lifted or uh, the virus will spread throughout the state and i think the cases will increase at that time a wave may occur in kerala i cannot predict this time now we are safe at that time we are safe we flattened the curve and we are safe and i cannot predict whether uh, more cases will occur or not as i said that occurred in kerala next time uh, another wave came here you know and but they put it like that and same was vogue i never know any person in uh, vogue magazine or like that uh, one uh, day i got a call from vogue that they wanted to uh, give my face in the cover picture as cover picture 
and the, they wanted to take a photograph. Uh, I said that I will send a photograph to you, but they said no, no, no. We not want, don't want your photograph. A team will come there and they will take a photograph of you. And immediately they will came here. At that time they came here and they took uh, some photographs of me and they put it in Vogue magazine. That also happened accidentally, you know. I never think about that. That was the thing. And the advice, as you said, uh, nothing but uh, the proper action at the proper time, that is. In each and every problem, the solution is within the problem. I believe like that. There is no problem without solution. Some problem we can solve easily. In easy method, we can solve the problem. Even in maths or even in life, uh, everywhere we can so, uh, pro, uh, solve some problem easily. But some problem, we cannot discard anything. Uh, that no, no solution for this problem. I am discarding this thing. I will not, uh, I cannot get any answer uh, for this problem. Don't discard anything. The problem, solution is there within the problem, but we should have to try our best. Uh, alone, we cannot do anything. The team formation and discussion and team activity, that is the most important thing to solve a social problem, you know. To solve any social problem, we should have a team activity. And I know that I am a science teacher, only high school teacher. Uh, but uh, these, are, these are great issues uh, uh, in, in front of a high school teacher, you know. But I am a science teacher. I believe in science. And I know that this kind of infections, we can stop it. There are some methods. And what is that method? That should be discussed with colleagues. I discussed with the IAS officers. I discussed with the prominent medical officers. And they can give some suggestions. And with that suggestion, I started work. I am not alone. And also, uh, in grassroot level, I have some accredited social health activists, ASHA workers, uh, poor ladies or uh, very loving uh, young ladies. Most of them are ladies. And they were ready to go to each and every home for awareness creation, to check whether they are uh, obeying quarantine, etc. And they are volunteers. They are the actual heroes. The actual, uh, I, I, I always uh, said that the actual heroes are behind the curtains. And uh, the team formation is the very important thing. Please discuss your problems with others. And please share your attitude or share your difficulties with the uh, people you are loving or uh, people you can trust. Don't, not to everybody. Everybody, but you should have some eminent personalities or very nearest friends. Even the problem is you are uh, about your life uh, and the social issues. That also we can share with all the dearest friends who, whom you trust. And that is the method. The next thing is the decision making. Don't hesitate to make decisions. Sometimes people may criticize you. When I was acting as minister, some eminent persons called and asked me, teacher, why are you overacting? The virus will go within two or one or two weeks. Uh, there is nothing to fear about this virus. It will go. And the mass immunity is the important thing. And mitigation method is the correct way. Please allow the virus to spread all over the society. And out of that, we will get a mass immunity, herd immunity, and that and then it will stop. But I didn't choose that. I choose with the method of containment method only to stop the virus and save most of the people from the virus. That is why we can reduce the mortality rate. In Sweden, Norway, Sweden and Denmark, they are known for the education and very strong health system, very good countries. But they chose the mitigation method first. They didn't act. They didn't prevent the spread of the virus. They allow the virus to spread all of the society and to get a herd immunity. Thousands of people died. Lakhs of people died. And after that, the Norway Prime Minister uh, said that don't imitate us. Our system, our method was strong. This is not the pro actual, uh, apt method. We should have to contain this thing. And we took the mitigation method that was wrong. But we cannot uh, uh, regret on that because we choose the, uh, the containment method and we can also use the mitigation also, but we choose that method. That decision making. Uh, sometimes people may ridicule us. Sometimes they may laugh at us, but nothing very. 
if we are right, we can implement the, that decision making in the proper time, right decision at the right time. That is the most important uh, the character of a ruler or a student or everyone. That is the most important thing. And one more thing last, uh, that our first prime minister, Jawaharlal Nehru said that success often goes to those who dare and act. It seldom goes to the timid. If you are, uh, uh, you want, you have an aim and please uh, stick on that aim. And Paolo Coelho also said, if you have a dream, if a strong dream, strong goal, the whole world will be behind you. If you are uh, losing it or you, are, you become lazy, no one will help you and your dream never fulfilled. And uh, that is the thing, success often goes to those who dare and act. And it seldom goes to the image. That is the uh, advice to the dear students. You are smart students. Uh, you are brilliant. And uh, you can solve so many problems in future, you know. You are studying literature also. You, uh, you are making your minds uh, some uh, the, the good feelings of humanities and uh, the love for the society and love for all the uh, human beings. In India, we have to solve many problems because the disparities of poor and which are the... And in uh, the poverty index, our country's uh, uh, position is the 101 out of 170. And when you become some employees, some uh, you uh, start working uh, any firm or any school or college, please try to work for the poor. Please raise the slogans for them and work hard and become eminent personalities in your field and become social. Uh, you should have some social life. And also you think that women are equal, not a downtrodden sex, you know. You can take your decision about your life and uh, you are independent and uh, you are powerful and think you are powerful. Sure. That is such an inspiration, ma'am. You're such an inspiration for all of us. I'll, we'll you. always take care of whatever you have said, uh, ma'am. I'm okay. sure it will help us a lot. Thank you, dear. Yes, ma'am. I'm from Kerala, so I can relate to Me all too. the things you have said. <laughs> ah, yes. Me too. You are from Kerala. Malayalam <laughs> Parayo. Ah. <laughs> okay, Mona, that's nice. English literature student and the English in English for the other Machapata, but I can communicate the ideas to you. Oh. That's much. And, ma'am, I need to say that hands off to you and your team, which work. Because from Kerala, I know that you guys have worked hard and you efficiently managed each and everything. Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> Thank you, Neetu. Thank you, Molo. <laughs> yeah. So, ma'am, uh, Anupa, ma'am. Um, and yeah, uh, what uh, I'm, I'm part of the faculty. Yes, these uh -huh. two students are from Kerala, but that's incidental. I think uh, all the students here are equally privileged and equally inspired listening to you. We are. We are like beaming uh, from year to year to have you with us and what a privilege indeed but you have to tell us how to be fearless you did with so much, you did whatever you did with so much of courage that everybody should have the dare to act and what an act it was it's being applauded the world over and uh, the limelight is on you uh, the kerala model is being talked about so so uh, you are a living legend already uh, yes, and, and also to have broken the barriers of uh, gender discrimination. But Kerala always was about uh, women being in the forefront. Nursing and healthcare uh, is something that you have put in place. But you have to tell us, where do we get this resilience in the midst of all this pandemic, all this chaos? How do you maintain your sanity? Not just listening to Rafi. We also keep listening to Rafi and Kishore Kumar all the time. <laughs> But you have to tell us, what is that mantra which keeps you going <laughs> in spite yeah. of all the odds? And you're so calm about it and you're so poised. So you have to tell us that. Thank you, really. madam. I believe in my team. That is why actually uh, I am taking all the credit uh, what they uh, did at that time. You know, they were loving to me. They love me. That is the uh, one sure. of the uh, thing is they love me. They, they always uh, uh, said that, uh, madam, 
we are working for you don't worry madam they every time they are consoling me that don't worry madam we are working for you not so we have me. to be in love with each other which means love is the mantra so <laughs> if you have a dedicated leader like you leading from the front and we all the members of the team have to be in love with each other so our zestians are also full of lot of zest and love with each other and that's how they managed to get you here yes. uh, and uh, dr rohit would like to say something Hi. Thank Hi. you, madam. Dr. Rohit is uh, also from Kerala. Uh -huh. So he's uh -huh. in charge. Hi, so, ma'am. Uh, but that's hello. incidental, Hi. as I told you. We are all Keralaites right now. Yeah, so there, there is no... He's from faculty or a student? Yeah, yeah, I'm a faculty. He's faculty. a teacher in charge for the department. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So there is no, you know, like the way I can emphasize the success, the way you have led the fight, because uh, sitting here, we were all... constantly thinking of uh, how to reach kerala exactly <laughs> <laughs> we all wanted to be in kerala <laughs> so, i remember uh, when sima finally went to kerala we kept asking her and she told us quite a few things first hand during her journey to kerala yes yeah. sorry rose dr rohit i interrupted yeah, yeah. you no no but like, uh, you know but the one thing that i was so struck with uh, you know uh, not just today uh, shailaja ma'am has always foregrounded the team work she has never said this is something of a one man you know like uh, army she has always emphasized that this is a team work and the success go to the entire team and uh, i think that, you know that is actually the Uh, the 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 fact uh, had it been a one man fight it would have collapsed right at the beginning so she, you know, she could sustain in the team she could uh, uh, encourage her team and you know she listened to her team and you know uh, and there lies the success so i think this is uh, this is what we have to learn from the 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 the, the, the whole experience Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for leading Thank you. the fight. Thank from you, Rohit. Thank you very much. I will convey uh, this thing to again. My they will often call me and uh, inquire about uh, the situations, etc. And I will convey uh, <laughs> your greetings to them also. They, Thank you. Thank you. So our our salutations and our regards to your team workers. Yes. Amazing work. We are Definitely. immensely grateful. definitely <laughs> uh, before we end uh, sneha can we have a uh, you know screenshot with uh, the yes, chief sir. guest and all the participants yes sir so i'll just uh, click a screenshot i will request everyone to switch on their whoever can switch yeah. on their camera um sir you are in, you aren't audible i uh, sorry not audible visible uh, i think because of network dr rohit Just a sec. Just a sec. Am I visible yes, now? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, you have to tilt the camera a little downward so that your face is in profile. Is it okay now? The panel of your uh, uh, laptop. Yeah. Now you are in frame. Oh. Okay, we we'll quickly take the screenshot, ma'am. Sorry, so sorry for the delay. We know we no, have no, a meeting. No. No problem. Okay, I'll just take the picture. Everyone okay. say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Thank you thank so you, much, ma'am. Ma thank you, ma'am. Okay. And uh, there is an official vote of thanks, also, ma'am. Just yes, uh, we will finish it in a couple yeah. of minutes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes, ma'am. Who is doing that? Yeah, Nandish. Um, <laughs> Nandana will propose the vote okay, of okay. thanks. Okay. Hi, Nandana. Uh, my thanks to all. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hi, Nandana Pia, Vice President of ZEST, the Department of English, Vindhya Alabadiya College, University of Delhi. Deem it a great honor and privilege to be here today for third session of the Distinguished Lecture Series 2021 from Post-Pandemic World: Pandemonium to Paradise. We have learned a great deal and are indebted to our speaker, KK Shailja Ma'am, who, despite her busy schedule, has managed to find time. for this event and have inspired each one of us with her words we hope to cope up every situation in our life with the strength and fearlessness you taught us from your words thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you everybody shall i thank you yes ma'am thank you so much ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am thank you so much for uh, 
coming to our function. And we'll invite you again. So please, please accept our <laughs> Thank invitation. Thank you, madam. Again. Yeah. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to the ICT Center. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank thanks you. to all the faculty members. And, and thanks to ITC. Anand sir, thank you so much. Yes. And all the faculty members. Thanks to you, Rohit. Now, I <laughs> Please don't thank me. <laughs> I no, should no, be thanking again, everyone. You know, the teamwork is thank being exemplified and we have, again and again, we reiterate, it's the teamwork which gets you anywhere. Yeah, yeah, so, true. True. Uh, thanks to all the Zestians and all the Zest office bearers and the faculty member. This yes. was this was very nice. Thank you. I, uh, Thank so, you so, so much. So man. see you tomorrow. <laughs>